find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't stopping yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail for the set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the pain. Hey guys, welcome back. It's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 46. Back at it again. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter's production up here in uh, Pittsburgh, PA, for some local groups like the IWC, the RWA, and my cohort, as usual, with me from down in San Antonio, Texas. He's a commentator for NWA Inspire Pro. He's Eamon Payton. He's at Eamon2, please, on the Twitters. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic, Sorgatron. It's another week, another another day to talk about independent wrestling. Excellent. So Excellent. why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? Before that, of course, you can uh, check out this and other shows over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We got all kinds of stuff going on there, all kinds of podcasts you can subscribe to, including this, the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. Uh, you can also drop us a line, any of your thoughts about indie wrestling. If you have questions for our upcoming guests or have somebody you think we should get on the show, uh, please drop us a line to the email address of goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the phone Phone number 412-206-WMS0, and you can leave a voicemail on the hotline right there. Uh, big thanks to Basic Sickness for our intro and outro music. And, of course, you can join us here live yourself at live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central Time. So with that, Eamon, I'm very excited. Uh, judging by the media, I've been sent in, in advance uh, for our guest this evening. Can, tell me about him. I am... I am immensely excited. So this is actually a guy that I've wanted to have on for a good while now, and and, and finally the the stars have aligned, uh, as as they say. Uh, he is he is a staple of Texas independent wrestling. Traveled the country, uh, working for various other top uh, independent wrestling promotions, uh, and uh, it's his first time here on the the Mayhem Show. Please welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the heaviest sumo in the land, Jojo Bravo. Jojo, how are you doing this evening? Thank you very much for having me, everyone. Tonight, we're going to have the Extreme Lightning bonus round. It's going to be SmackDown. It's going to be hardcore, drag out, the toughest thing that you can imagine, an intimate conversation between three friends. And why are we calling this the Extreme Lightning round? Well, because I'm coming to you live, not only from my house on the Kima Boardwalk, but I'm coming to you live from the MSN chat room, Boldar's Gate, medieval role-playing chat room. I've also turned it into an impromptu q and I've got your questions in hand. I took the questions, and I typed them out on my phone, but we're going extreme today because I took an Ambien. I've got two glasses of wine back-to-back, just pounding them. Uh, I'm petting my cat, Martha. I'm sitting in my garage, so all senses are totally engaged, and it's going to be a race against the clock because coherent... It's going to be a thing. We're way past uh, my bedtime at this time. I don't know where it is where you guys are, but it's 10 o'clock here, <laughs> which means Star Trek, the new generation time, and time to pass out. But nevertheless, we're going to go with the extreme lightning bonus round here on the Any Mayhem Show. And me, JoJo Bravo, I'm happy to be here. How are you guys doing? I'm doing fantastic. We, we appreciate you taking the time. Uh, 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 from your regular from your regular bedtime to join us uh, for this special occasion, uh, to Absolutely. sort of to sort of start off, I guess as a as a icebreaker of sorts. And and I know uh, from watching you wrestle, you have a lot of influence, but influences, I should say. Uh, but uh, the first question we like to ask is, what is your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? That's a great question, and then it's a it's a great icebreaker. Um, ice ties into the whole event. Uh, I was in Ohio. Um, I can almost trace the entire event back. I think that based on my own research, if there's who hasn't gone back and watched their first event, I, I'm almost certain that the first event that I ever saw, and I'm going to date myself here, was 1995 um, I'm a young. I'm a younger man. Young, young at heart, young in mind. I, uh, 1995 or 1994, I believe the main event was Randy Savage versus the Giants. So 
consider that Hogan had a pretty big foothold in WCW at this point. What many consider to be the greatest time of WCW, 1994 through 1996. That was prime watching for me. Um, I was watching it with my granddad, and um, I think that I, I, my, my sister was watching uh, The Land Before Time in the other room, so I was switching out. You know, I was watching, uh, I was watching WCW. I was there for Tisco's match, but I was out uh, during the Max Muscles encounter. You know, and uh, went to see, wanted to catch up with what Littlefoot was doing. Um, I don't actually know what happens in that movie because I was bit by the wrestling bug. <laughs> it way, uh, from what I understand, Littlefoot and his whole family make it to the Great Valley just fine. And uh, Hogan rules forever. Absolutely. Now, you, know, you mentioned around 94, 96 time of, of WCW, uh, and, and obviously yeah. sort of in that, in that later period was the time that the, the cruiserweight division was starting to emerge, and you were starting to see a lot of people from Mexico and Japan, and I know uh, uh, your style of wrestling is very influenced by, like, lucha wrestling and, and, and the Japanese style. Uh, uh, were there any of those names that sort of, like, stuck out to you during that period? Oh, man, I... Uh... Yeah, I guess so. Um, <laughs> well, I wasn't allowed to stay up on school nights, so Monday Nitro, I could only maybe catch the early half. Um, but I thoroughly remember many, many hours spent watching WCW Saturday night, mm. WCW Saturday morning, and I even think that there may have been a WCW uh, mid-afternoon program. And this is where you could catch guys like Ultimate Dragon and Johnny B. Bad, awesome wrestlers like The Gambler and Roadblock, um, those were, were building blocks in my early wrestling experience. Um, as a matter of fact, I considered those guys mostly the main event until I was made fully cognizant of Monday Nitro, where the real stars were like Hugh Morris and Big Bubba and Ric Flair and Lex Luger, et cetera, et cetera. It's the who's who, really. But um, early on, I would say in the embryonic stages of my wrestling fandom, those guys were uh, the, the cream of the crop for me. A time where you could see Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero have a main event match, have a have a have a, a twenty minute main event match on Saturday night, and no one was thinking twice about it, especially not me. Awesome, definitely. Now, now, were you mainly um, was your household mainly a WCW household? Because uh, I know I know you were also a big fan of, of people like uh, like a Yokozuna necessarily. Uh, uh, to the point where uh, I believe uh, a couple weeks ago at Fun 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 Fest, you had, were stopped in your tracks by a, a man wearing a Yokozuna jean jacket. Um, uh, were you aware of, of WC, WWF at the time and, and some of their influence, or were you strictly uh, WWF? Well, I was a WCW man, but my family actually went the other way. See, they liked Land Before Time. Mm. They didn't have any interest in wrestling. They were more. Uh, they went that direction. So I was a loner in the household. Uh, I was always a strange boy, uh, a solitary shell. I always enjoyed my wrestling by myself, you know, with my my uh, my figurines, my Spawn action figures. I had a whole Spawn invasion of WCW uh, that I booked in the late '90s. That was all me, and uh, couldn't get the family involved. Yeah, I, I tried to get each and every one of them into wrestling, and then later, in 2005, when I would actually start wrestling, I, I took each and every one of them to training to try to get them into the business. And, I mean, obviously, they all had their own levels of success. I know that my mom toured the East Coast briefly <laughs> and won some secondary titles, but honestly, it just wasn't for any of them. They're, they have no interest, and they have no aptitude. Mm. They can't understand the wrestling of someone like Yokozuna. Understandable. I mean, co complex individual, obviously. Um, you, now, to go into your actual training, like you said, you, you mentioned you started. Sure. You started around two thousand five. Um, uh, how was that like, and how did you discover uh, professional wrestling school? The, the fact that you've been trained to become a, a professional wrestler. Okay. Well, I was a down and out um, youngster. Um, two thousand five. So I guess I was maybe about sixteen or seventeen years old. I was taken in by a man named uh, George De La Isla. He <clears throat> was a star of the old uh, UWF. No, let me go back. Not the UWF, but its later, um, 
the UWF was the was the uh, sportatorium in Texas, the progenitor to what would later become the watered down GWF, mm. and he was a star of that program, uh, Mister Mexico, number two. And uh, he made a foothold here in Texas, and uh, he took me in and uh, taught me all about wrestling. He told me that, you know, he really didn't think that I was going to go anywhere or do anything. I was a small I was a small guy. I know it's very hard to imagine, but I was a smaller guy, very, very short, skinny, um, didn't have what it takes to be a wrestler, which is basically height, weight, you know, size, largeness. Um, but I attained those qualities. Because I learned the fundamentals of professional wrestling, first and foremost. I spent many of my my first few years in wrestling just uh, being taken apart and training every single day, having all of my physical habits changed. And it, it does something to you mentally to come home exhausted and to, to know that you're going to have to be at it the next day, but also try to maintain your schoolwork, which I did not do. I, I was largely a failure scholastically and academically. Is that because of pro wrestling? Absolutely not. I have no aptitude for numbers or language. But my wrestling career really took off in about 2011 when I uh, made the big journey about three or four miles up the road to a place called Anarchy Championship Wrestling where I started to get some some a bit more mainstream exposure. People were burning my face to DVD and uh, you know spreading them about. Uh, low income bootleg DVDs are actually a great way to get yourself exposed to the uh, to the indie wrestling fan, and so that's how basically this whole entire adventure started. Definitely, I believe the first time I actually saw you wrestle was for uh, NRD Championship Wrestling. I because I know you had sort of wrestled in the San Antonio scene uh, beforehand, but it was like I think you had left right before I, I started uh, 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 going to independent wrestling shows. Um, yes, that's so, right. And uh, at that time, you had not yet grown your signature awkward facial hair. I had not, which which I I have since updated. Uh, 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 but yes, thank you uh, for that for that post pubescent time. patches. Um, <laughs> you were a fresh faced young boy. Yes, I I, I indeed was. Um, so uh, you talk about sort of getting exposed uh, uh, through anarchy and stuff like that, and getting yourself out to more people. You've actually gotten to wrestle a lot of uh, different places. Uh, especially the past couple of years, uh, especially uh, you made a, a big transition, I would say, in your life, uh, moving up to the, uh, the St. Louis area. Um, I kind of going into that a bit. How was that like sort of making that decision to to leave the Texas independent wrestling scene, which I know people sort of talk about a lot that eventually you have to sort of expand yourself in a way, especially in Texas. Um, so, so how was that sort of transition like? Well, I think for anything that you want to do, for any experience that you want to have, you have to fully immerse yourself. And I mean, for anything that you want to accomplish, you have to really get your hands dirty. You have to get in the garden and you have to get knee deep in the mud. And you, you have to tell yourself that this is it no matter what. Mm. So when I decided to take a short excursion to the Midwest um, a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I'm not good with time either. Time <laughs> is a element to me. So when I made that excursion up to the Midwest, the decision was basically that my ride was moving up there and that I wasn't going to have a way to go. So I said, well, I, I want to be a part of these Midwest shows that I've been doing. And before, it was simply a matter of getting drug along. But now these guys are going up there because they're looking for new opportunities. They're trying to spread out. What, what, what listeners may not understand is that Texas, being the, <clears throat> being the third largest state in the Union, behind California and behind Alaska, is that it's very difficult to navigate within it. It's very large. You can drive 10, 12 hours, and it's possible to still be in Texas and reach just the upper level, just depending upon where you are. Mm -hmm. So trying to get out and do different shows, trying to get out to be a part of shows that are not in your state, it's very difficult because, A, it's going to be a long travel time, and, B, promoters are not exactly going to want to pay for that. You know, and plane tickets don't grow on trees. So they moved out there to the Midwest, which itself is a great central hub for wrestling. There's a lot of great promotions in that area, but it's also easier to navigate because those states are smaller. They're punier. They're weaker. Um, their politics are meaningless. The people are disdainful and lame. Uh, they're not boisterous and proud and powerful. 
like us here in Texas. They don't own any firearms. They're a bunch of stinking cowards. But I'm 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 getting off track here. So I moved up there a year and a half ago, and I experienced a a, a really harsh winter there. But what I did notice was that the wrestling was completely different. There were people who were experimenting in new styles, and I mean everyone, top to bottom. Progressivism does not have its roots deep in the Bible Belt in Texas, and everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. And it, it's no, it's uh, it's no different in wrestling. Here we still are. The 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 older aesthetics are still favored by the fan by the fans, even promoters, veterans. That's not that's not a detraction. It's really mm-hmm. it's a uh, it's a positive because someone has to you know keep the torch burning. But up there, I noticed a lot of new things. I met a lot of different people, and I got to experience a whole lot of different wrestling styles. And um, once I felt that I had done what I could do, I planted my flag and decided that travel was not really an issue. I uh, I left. Mm. And now I'm back here. Like I said, I'm over on the Kingdom Boardwalk in <laughs> in Clear Lake, Texas. A little bit of R&R time. The, uh, the, the winter that I experienced there and the, the different hardships of the North was not my place to be. I st- but the connections that I made there allowed me to travel a multitude of different wrestling companies that I still work for up there. And I want to take this opportunity to let everyone know that I, um, I'm gearing up for a couple of what I would probably say are, are the biggest matches of my life, which are going to be occurring some, some in the Midwest and some here in Texas one uh, coming up against Michael Elgin in St. Louis Anarchy, and another match which is even bigger than that. But I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to announce that until it's formally until that is you know I'm not going to blow the lid on that one to your millions of uh, listeners here today. Till till it's signed, till delivered. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And Michael Elgin and I are going at it for the third time. Hmm. Um, in the past year, this is going to be our third match. This is what you would call the rubber match. Although I guess that you would say a rubber match is probably would require me to have beat him one time, but that doesn't matter. When I win this match, there's a forced stipulation that he is going to be forced to shake my hand in the middle of the ring. Now, the past two times that I've been in St. Louis, that I've been in the Midwest, I've wrestled Michael Elgin and he's refused to shake my hand. Mm. Or he has, he's shaken my hand, but then he's given me a series of power bombs and clotheslines and everything under the sun. But once this match is over, once I have defeated him, Michael Elgin, the beast, the dragon, once he submits to me, he's going to be forced to shake my hand for real with a a medium firm grip because not too hard. I I have a very sensitive. I have very sensitive knuckles. That's the thing. Um, they're very tender from all of the different uh, work that I've done in my life. And he's going to shake my hand and show me the respect that I deserve. And I'm going to take the opportunity right here on the Wrestling Mayhem show to to turn up that stipulation and take it one more. Not mm. only is he going to look me in my eyes and give me the respect I deserve and shake my hand, but Michael Elgin is going to be forced to allow me to buy him a meal at the Olive Garden. And here's the thing. No friends. It's just going to be the two of us, two guys sharing a nice meal, and we're going to have a a conversation as friends, he and I. And here's the thing. Bonus, extra hard, God mode. We're not going to talk about wrestling or sports or weightlifting. Exactly. So he is in for I a say, treacherous. He is in for a treacherous evening. Slash enchanting, no doubt. That's what I'm looking forward to. And I and I have my time in the Midwest spent under the tutelage of a man called Pierre Abernathy to blame for all of this great success that but, I've been having and for this monumentous match. He but, took me under his flabby wing. <laughs> his big albatross wing. He took me under his wing while I was in the Midwest, and he showed me a new world, a whole new fantastic point of view. 
And now I'm staring eye to eye with the beast, just like that movie, The Sandlot. Absolutely. Michael Elgin's like a big, fat St. Bernard that's been breathing down my net on the other side. And I'm going to cross that Rubicon, and I'm going to battle him for, for, for all the marbles, for all the respect. Now, 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 and not a to meal s- at Olive Garden paid for by me in pleasant <laughs> conversation. That's pro wrestling. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Not, not, to, not to stir anything up, but we, but we know Michael Elkin, a very, a very strong individual. Not to, you know, psychoanalyze him in any sense, but you think his, his recent disrespect of you may be the fact that he's a bit intimidated by, by your own strength. I mean, you, you, that you've shown off. On, on many occasions, you know, you're the heaviest sumo in the land for the for a very good reason. Well, I don't know. The truth is, I believe that he's had some issues in his life, mm. his personal life. I take the time when he and I are down there in the gridiron, when we're battling on the floor, we're battling the ring. Not a lot of people know this, but we wrestlers talk and we have conversations. And I'm I, and when he's dragging me about by my ear or pulls me by my cheek fat and drags me around the ring, I'm always like, what's the matter, big guy? What is this really about? <laughs> and that's what we're going to find out. On December the 7th, in, Alt- in Alton, Illinois, for a company called St. Louis Anarchy, I understand that that's very confusing. <laughs> Yuletide Terror. The name of the company is St. Louis Anarchy, but it's occurring in Alton, Illinois. Jojo Bravo, the wild challenger. The heaviest sumo in the land is going to take on the beast Michael Elgin. Or maybe yeah. not. Of, of according to these Twitter uh, things that I'm reading just now, it's possible that that may not happen. What is oh, this? Oh, no. What? The Baldur's Gate MSN chat room, I'm hearing from the fans right now that, okay, we're not going to talk about that right now. We're, we've got, some, <laughs> we've got some, some, the, some politics are stirring right now. Breaking news, everyone. I, I think I, it says, I it says Elgin, here that Ring of Honor might be pulling out. Ta- well, you know what? I can't imagine that Michael Elgin is going to back away from this most important match. I was going to say top five most favorite matches of the past year. His match with JoJo Bravo was named number six. I know he's looking forward to this rematch, and I know that it's going to happen. Come rain, sleet, snow, or shine, I know he's going to be in there. And at the end of it, he's going to shake my hand. I'm sorry for the vitriol. Okay, no, I apologize absolutely. for that. But I just get really charged up when I think about this stuff. Absolutely, I, I can definitely uh, definitely see that. Now, also to mention uh, another big company that you got the chance to work for through through your expansion, I guess you could say, uh, was uh, Chikara Pro Wrestling. I know you debuted for them uh, in their Chicago uh, events this past year. Uh, a bit of an unsuccessful showing against uh, Max Smashmaster of the Devastation Corporation. But uh, uh, what was it like stepping foot in a in a Chikara Pro Wrestling ring? Hmm. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Chikara Pro Wrestling, a a uh, Philadelphia-based wrestling organization focused around friendship and fun and mm-hmm. fury. Um, I believe that that match was. Uh, do you remember what month that was? I want to say June or July, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was in June or July, and uh, I stepped into the ring against a man named Max Mashmaster. What can I tell you about the environment? Well, uh, Max Mashmaster is a very physically intense, large individual, so obviously the atmosphere was heavy. Mm. Uh, the fans are top rate. They're, they're very well-dressed. A lot of them were festooned in caps and different types of seashell jewelry, um, they brought opera style glasses. They had very eccentric facial hair and they really appreciate the basics of pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. I remember that Billy Rock had a match on that show. I debuted along with Billy Rock and Matt Fitchett on a Chikara show. And the fans were just tickled by every little exchange. Now, Max, Matt, we, we, you know that when Max Smash Master a man called Max Smashmaster steps into the ring with Jojo Bravo. Obviously, it's not going to be a technical affair, mm-hmm. but it was a clash of two titans. It was it was not unlike Godzilla versus King Kong. Um, it was two behemoths smashing into each other, and the fans were delighted. But we gave them a bit because Max Smashmaster uh, hit a, t- a moonsault from the top rope. 
He did a do that. Top rope, a man with such dexterity that he can hit a top rope moonfall. The fans were simply delighted. Uh, the takeaway from that experience was uh, it was a ve- it was very much a learning experience. I really enjoyed being around the locker room. I really loved all the fans. Everybody asked me, um, Jojo Bravo, why do you not have a T-shirt on? <laughs> or uh, and I and I said to them because uh, I I lost it in locker room. Sorry, uh, they were asking me why I didn't have uh, t-shirts for sale, but I thought that they were asking me why I didn't have a shirt on, and I just uh-huh. told them this is what I do all the time. I don't ever wear one. I'm not wearing one right now. <laughs> life, life of a pro wrestler. Absolutely, uh, shirtless vests, denim vests, sleeveless. That's as far as you can get me. <laughs> Awesome, but but definitely definitely sounded like you had a really good experience uh, wrestling for the folks. I had a, I had a fantastic time, and Philadelphia is is a great place for wrestling, and the fans mm-hmm. there are very dedicated to the action. They're super energetic, and they and they're there. They're present for everything. And kudos to Chikara for creating a a wrestling program which successfully engages the fans every single time, and and does its best to not exclude anyone. I, I I promote Chikara uh, uh, wholeheartedly, and I know that they're sort of a smaller company, kind of unheard of. But if I can do uh, what I can to get the get the word out about Chikara Pro Wrestling, get the name out there, get the brand out there, guys. If you don't know about Chikara Pro Wrestling, go ahead and check it out uh, on your on your on your internet. Check it out on the YouTube. They've got DVDs, from what I understand. It's a great promotion. And I see a lot of big things from them in the future. Awesome, definitely. Um, any besides, you know, you sort of mentioned your battles with Michael Elgin and stuff like that as being some some of your most epic uh, encounters. Uh, is there any other matches sort of over your career that sort of stick out at, to you at least as some of your favorites to to compete? In? Oh sure, oh sure. I defeated Robbie E in an un un air conditioned military armory uh, in nice. front of about. This is in front of about eight or nine fans. It was an epic encounter. We gave it all we got. I don't know if they he bled. I bled. Um, but I defeated him with a small package. That was a standout match. And then I wrestled um, El Generico. You did wrestle El Generico. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of some bigger names. It doesn't matter. Who cares? <laughs> uh, my best matches are ahead of me. This I, I, match with Elgin is is very important to me, but I I'm telling you, and this is this is a this is a teaser right here. There's an even more important match coming down the pike that you would not believe. Yes, I have wrestled uh, Michael Elgin before. I've wrestled El Generico. I have wrestled the the Colony of mm-hmm. Chikara. I wrestled Colt Cabana. Early in my career, I wrestled Shingo Takagi of Dragon Gate fame. But none of those matches compare to the match that is in front of me coming up. And you're just going to have to check it out online. You're going to have to stay up to date with me online at I Samurai Drive U, that's the letter U, on Twitter. Or you can find me at BrandyFan for Life. That's more of a personal Twitter. If you want to just know what's going on in my day to day life, you can check me out on there. Are we talking about the the, the singer performer uh, Brandy? Absolutely. Big big fan, big fan uh, is JoJo Bravo. For life. Yeah. Uh, I I also want to. Uh, I believe I I haven't gotten to see footage of this, but I I believe you were in the ring at one point with uh, in one point of your career with one Buff Bagwell. Uh, that has to be one that that, that that sticks out to you. Oh sure, that was a fun experience. But let me tell you about something even greater than that. I was in the ring against Pat Tanaka in Corpus <laughs> Christ. Back in the one one with the man himself, Pat Tanaka. I, I it, was, it, was a, it was an incredible match. Went about seven minutes, <laughs> and I was pinned to get a seat out power bomb. I, I, I just sound all that epic when I say it like that. But let me tell you what: in that seven minutes, we gave it to each other. Pat, legendary Orient Express. Pat Tanaka. Look him up on the internet. If you don't know who Pat Tanaka is, you are missing out, fam. I went one-on-one with this guy. Of all the dragons that I've slayed in my time, Pat Tanaka is a legendary guy, and he gave me a lot of great advice. 
during and after that match that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. They're very disappointed. I didn't get a chance to see that being a Corpus Christi. And that, that, that's a match I would have loved to have uh, witnessed firsthand. But absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. That match happened. Not a lot of people know that. But Jojo Bravo wrestled Pat Tanaka. <laughs> Corpus Christi. That occurred. It's it, it down in the record books. Uh, speaking of, of opponents uh, that you have faced, uh, uh, in sort of a, in sort of a dream world, in a fantasy world, in a sense, who are some of the people that JoJo Bravo would love to to wrestle uh, one day? Horst Hoffman. Um, let's see. Um, you know what? That's probably the best. That's probably the best. I've always I've always been a fan of Horst Hoffman. And I would really love a chance to uh, get in there and learn from the great grappler, Horst Hoffman. Uh, Sunny Beach, big fan of Sunny Beach. I would like to wrestle against Glacier. And that match almost occurred here in Texas. That match was, was, was almost booked, but the con- we couldn't get the contracts just right for Glacier versus Jojo Bravo to happen. That was almost promoted in uh, Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth area. Glacier versus Jojo Bravo almost happened, but wouldn't you know it, they couldn't get the price right. The, the, as you know, money is a big issue in independent pro wrestling, and uh, they couldn't get exactly the right. Money was money was an issue. I mean, I know that the fans don't want to know about that. It's a really ugly side of pro wrestling. But money, money, was an, it, money came into play, agreement couldn't be made, and that match didn't happen, and I'm super disappointed because that would have been a dream come true. Absolutely. We can only hope for, for one day for that to occur. Um, uh, the, well, the if, final... they, if they would just agree to my price, then we could have it. But oh, they okay. Didn't, so we're not going to do it. I, 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 I assume it would be on the other hand, but uh, uh, absolutely. Um, no. uh, uh, sort of final question of sorts, and this is a, a, another question that we ask all of our guests here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, it's very much a discussion topic since uh, uh, this podcast is geared around the world. Uh, of, Lay it on me. of independent professional wrestling and feel free to take it uh, whichever way that you wish, whichever way that your mind uh, uh, guides it. Uh, but in your opinion, what is the best thing about independent wrestling and what is the worst thing about independent wrestling? Hmm. Okay, those are two great questions and I could expound upon each one of those questions for an eternity. Um. What was the question again? <laughs> a best and a best and a worst thing about about independent wrestling. Anything, anything you can okay. possibly think of. Definitely. All right. Well, listen. The best thing about independent professional wrestling is that you, the fan, are getting a chance to patronize something local. Now, I'm going to say this about anything in your area, whether it's restaurants, whether it's a business. It's always best to get something local because that comes from you. It's an extension of you. Go to your independent wrestling show. Sit in the front row. It's an experience like no other. These are guys who are putting it out there, but they're, they, they are a part of you. And, and uh, to see the creative, artistic cornucopia of characters at your own independent wrestling show, to see how it all plays out, it's it it, it it sometimes it's great sometimes it's bad, but that to me is the best thing about independent professional wrestling is that you don't exactly know what you're going to get. There's no way to predict it. Mm-hmm. But in all of my years of independent professional wrestling, I've performed in flea markets, I I've performed in parking lots, I've been in the backs of bars, I I uh, have been in big arenas, all of those things are a great contributing experience. And what makes it is the fan. So the, so the direct interaction between fans and performers is way more prevalent in the independent professional wrestling experience because we're right there in your unair conditioned armory, in your parking lot, in your back of bar. That's all happening right in front of you. So, I, so, so if there's even a question, if you see some hastily MS Paint created flyer in your neighborhood, don't hesitate. Check it out. No matter what happens, good or bad, I promise that you won't be disappointed. Now let's uh, examine the second part of that question. The worst part 
of independent professional wrestling. The the worst part of independent professional wrestling is hmm. You know what? I, I I'm incapable of answering that question. There's no way that I can negatively endorse uh, independent professional wrestling as a performer or as a fan. It's worth it no matter what happens. It's a it's a it's a great chance to get out and see local performers purveying an art that all of us are passionate about and all of us are passionate about keeping in existence. It's a wonderful thing. Um, there are no negative aspects, and I'm saying that as a performer. Mm. I've been in, in a multitude of different locker rooms that had a had a great number of different personalities, both positive and negative. But if but to expound upon the negative elements of independent professional wrestling simply would not make it a worthwhile experience for me. I don't care what's bad about it. For you as a fan, go and check it out. No matter what happens, because wrestling is is a this is it's an incredible art form. It is a reflection of our society. And I really want you to ruminate on those words right there. Wrestling is a reflection of our society. Its job is to cast the picture back and, and so we can all take a look at ourselves. It's a great thing. And if it's going on in your community, go and check it out. There's no reason not to. Now, at Absolutely. this time, yeah, I, 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 I was hoping that you were satisfied with that answer as you're a great fan. I, I, very, I, very, I very much am. I, I normally, yeah. normally, you know, it's a no, but I, I would, I give it to you, Jojo Brown, because I definitely see your reasoning. Absolutely, it, the, the the negative aspects of anything are not worth your examination. Hmm. Just, just, just as the, the the negative aspects of your life, uh, meditating on those subjects can't do you any good. You've just got to press forward and try to take the best of what you can out of every situation. Independent professional wrestling is the same way. It's, it's the, the, the worthwhile elements of it far outweigh the negative. Now, at this time, Eamon, yes. now is it, I always thought that it was Patton, but this guy says Peyton, so I'm going to go ahead it and It is say, indeed Peyton. Uh, uh, there is no why, but uh, that's, that's the unique thing about it. That, that, that's what I enjoy. Okay, well, you know, you can say what you can have it as whatever you want. I know that you made the discovery earlier on Google Plus uh, that my real name, and I'm going to reveal it to everyone here, oh, is Seiji, it's Seiji Sakaguchi. Jojo Bravo is nothing more than a pseudonym for me because it was easier to digest. But Seiji Sakaguchi, kind of a very undynamic name. That is my real name. But at this time, I'm going to go ahead and field. Some of these questions that I have here, even if that's all right with you. Absolutely, JJ. I, I have a multitude of questions here that I transcribed. Uh, what happened was I took them here from the Baldur's Gate medieval RPG chat room. There's fireballs flying all around here. I took the questions, and I wrote them down on a piece of paper, and then I transcribed those to my phone and typed them there, and I'm bringing them to you here from the garage. And I'm going to be answering some of these questions for you, the fan. I'm taking over the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the Extreme Lightning Round. Now, I want you to remember all the factors that I said were in effect earlier. All of those, uh, it's even better. So, (laughs) here we go with our first question. This question is going to be coming to us from, looks like, best underscore Beatrix Beatrix and the question is what um, what do you like to do on the weekends and that is a great question that is probably my favorite question that I have ever been asked um, thank you Beth and, and hello to you so what I like to do on the weekends uh, when I when I'm not engaged in my work uh, most of you don't know this, but independent professional wrestlers usually have a second or third profession mm. because we like to contribute to the communities that we're in. So when I'm not working and when I'm not engaged in pro wrestling, um, I run a GeoCities Scott Bakula fan website. Um, I like to write. Uh, obviously, I like to get out and exercise when I can. It's, it's cold right now, so I'm probably not going to exercise for another three or four months. Putting on what I call my winter weight. I like to go outside and I like to grab 
uh, different, I like to take different samples of leaves, um, different foliage, different leaves. And what I do is I trace them on pieces of paper with the colored pencil. I trace over them. And uh, once I have that, then I, I classify them. And then I return the leaf to the tree that I got it in. Yeah, that's a little fun fact about me. It just feels right. Okay, so we're in the lightning round. We're going to just get through these questions. The second question is going to be coming uh, from this. Okay, this is Pete Don Donahue Don Donahue. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Pete. Don, I'm sorry. It's Bill Bailey. Okay, Bill Bailey <laughs> says, um, "What is what is the best time to wrestle?" And what do you like to eat? Oh, it's a good, it's a two part question. Okay, what? Uh, okay, I'm gonna go over. What? What do you? What is the best time to wrestle? And what do you like to eat? Um, well, I'm gonna answer the second question first. What do I like to eat? I really enjoy a steamed salmon. I I really enjoy smoked salmon. I probably have that about two or three times a week. I love smoked salmon, um, prepared any kind of way. Honestly. Um, I can't get enough of it. Fresh salmon is probably my favorite thing to eat. And as far as what is the best time to wrestle? Hmm. I'm going to say probably sometime, maybe like 10 or 1130 in the morning when I'm at my oh, most wow. energetic. That's a great, absolutely. That's a great time uh, to uh, wrestle. Yeah. And now I'm, uh Okay. One more. We've got time for one more question. We're going to squeeze it in here. They're, they came in like crazy earlier, so I've got them here on my phone. So give me just one second. Oh, absolutely. This question is going to come from uh, By- Byron, or is this Baron? Baron? <clears throat> Baron Braxton. I love the uh, I love the alliterations on all these names. I have to say <laughs> I really love all the alliterations on these names. Okay, what is... Okay, this is a little incoherent. What is your favorite wrestling... And that's it. Hmm. I'm going to assume that what the question here is, is what what is my favorite wrestling shows? What are my favorite wrestling promotions to enjoy? Hmm. I, think, I, think, I don't I think exactly can, know what you're saying here, Byron, but I'm going to go ahead and answer that the best I can. What is my oh, my favorite wrestling promotions? I'll go ahead and, and, and tell you. As, as I'll, I'll rank them. Favorite wrestling promotions, favorite wrestling to watch, Favorite wrestling, as your question states. I'm going to, uh, 2011, 2012, Osaka Pro Wrestling is probably my favorite. Um, a lot of hard hitting, a lot of technical action. Seconded only by WCW, Monday Nitro, of course. Michinoku Pro Wrestling from 1994, 95. Uh, stardom from uh, 2012 and onward. And uh, in last place, but certainly not least place, I would put my favorite uh, independent profe- professional wrestling to watch, because i got to put it in the indie in there, is uh, the early early pro wrestling gorilla from 2002, 2003. Mm-hmm. They had a great cast of characters back then. So when I, when I want to hit the video vaults and when I want to study some things, uh, that's what I watch. Thank you, Byron. Uh, Iron Braxton, thank you very much for those questions, and thank you all for those questions. I had to get those. Uh, I had to get those fan questions in. Oh, absolutely! Thank, thank, thank you, much, thank you much to those fans for for providing them. Uh, uh, Jojo Bravo, gotta say, and and I'm not you know to knock any of our past interviewees. Probably one of my favorite interviews we've had so far. I mean, we we've delved into a lot of of the nitty gritty of, of independent wrestling. We've revealed some real names. We've revealed some. Some some happenings of, of of how things go down and 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 it's been an absolute pleasure, sir. I knew that we were absolutely going to kill the business and rebuild it in our conversation and grow <laughs> our fond friendship, you and I. Absolutely. Uh, once again, uh, you, I know you plug your your social media uh, uh, platforms where people can find you. Uh, if you would mind doing that one more time, uh, and, absolutely. And you can find me at you. You can you can find me at my space. Beastmaster, Jojo, no underscores, all lowercase. You can find me on Facebook at Waka Blizzard, W-A-K-K-A dot Blizzard, just like it's spelled, at I Samurai Drive, U 
on Twitter, and um, you can find me on the Craigslist Haiku message board, but I won't tell you which guy I am. Oh. I just want you to get on there and enjoy some classic literature by friends and family of mine. Absolutely. And if, if you are wrestling uh, at an upcoming wrestling event, uh, what sort of uh, some of the places where people can find you? Okay, well, the number the, the number one thing you can find me at coming up is St. Louis Anarchy. Mm-hmm. And that is going to be on December the 7th. That is the Yuletide Terror. And I'm going to get a chance to perform alongside some of the, my personal favorite wrestlers, Jake Parnell, the Viking War Party, uh, James Lacey, Bolt Brady. Um, I think there might be uh, Kyle O'Reilly, ACH, those types of guys. But, um, yeah, Dan Walsh. <laughs> Uh, Angelus Lane has just been announced to take on Kimberly at that great show. So well, it's I believe be actually, uh, 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 Candice LeRae, uh, excuse me. But. Oh, Kimberly must have canceled. What a shame. Well, <laughs> at any rate, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great night. full of star studded action. I can't wait to be a part of it. I'm not looking forward to being back in that snowy weather again, but I know that the support of all the fans, that, that are out there every time at St. Louis Anarchy, including uh, the Roy Boys. Got to talk about the Roy Boys, the Cantors, all the people out there who, who, who believe in me, who bring me uh, canned coffee, who bring me dried fruit snacks to all the wrestling shows that I go to. Thank you very much for all of your support. I don't know when you will hear my voice again. But I want to take this opportunity to thank all of the independent professional wrestling fans from all around the world. Thank you for supporting our art. You are right there in the ring with us, keeping this thing alive. And that's a shoot. Absolutely. Uh, definitely go check them out, especially St. Louis Anarchy. Hopefully uh, uh, that Michael Elgin situation will be decided upon because uh, high stakes were, were announced here on the uh, Indie Mayhem show. And hopefully they will, they will stick to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that uh, was our talk with Jojo Bravo, and I think it's time for me and Sorg to talk about some of the news and the happenings going on in independent wrestling. Thanks, Sam, and what an, what an entertaining uh, – that was a great interview with Jojo Bravo, enlightening. I learned so much. Um, and now this picture of uh, he and Mike Elligan in an Olive Garden – sharing stories uh is burned into my brain somehow um i I want it to happen very badly i i do too i i think i do too for 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 sure for sure i i i gotta can definitely follow up with that one um but hey you sent me something over uh earlier i I did get a chance to watch it uh there's a documentary a mini documentary on intergender wrestling yeah it's done by uh, a guy by the name of kenny johnson who has actually uh, uh produced a couple of documentaries uh uh as of late uh, uh, there's one uh, he did on Johnny Gargano, what he did on Beta Scott. Uh, uh, he uh, a lot of the f- uh, footage comes from uh, uh, Absolute Intense Wrestling at, at their AIW events, uh, and the, his latest one uh, is on intergender wrestling. Uh, uh, the topic of uh, intergender wrestling, which is sort of becoming a very normal thing uh, for a lot of independent wrestling organizations, it's becoming a thing that's sort of on the rise. Um, uh, and some of the footage he got there was actually from. Uh, AIW's Battle of the Sexes event, which was an event that was entirely intergender matches, mm-hmm. uh, uh, which is, I think, a very big deal. Uh, I think it's something that um, it, it's something that needs to be talked about and discussed. Um, I personally heavily believe in intergender wrestling. I personally believe that it can succeed uh, to great heights um, from the fact that, in my opinion, women, you know. People talk about how women's wrestling is on the rise and how women are sort of having matches that can be held up to a lot of men's matches, uh, especially on an independent wrestling level. And I think that those lines are are getting a lot um, uh, uh, thinner now as far as, well, if that's the case, why can't a woman wrestle a man? Um, uh, But it's been something of debate a lot. Uh, I know a lot of people who, who I'm good friends with that, that uh, really enjoy wrestling that absolutely think intergender wrestling is, is terrible and, and that it shouldn't be done. I don't, I don't know if it necessarily comes from a, a, a point of, well, women are you know terrible at wrestling. It comes from a point of view of, of, of a lot of different things. And, and mm-hmm. some of the things that are discussed actually in the documentary uh, uh, by, by women, for that matter, I think Beta Scott goes into detail about how 
there are some places where you just can't have intergender wrestling matches because people look at it as, well, that's a man hitting a woman. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's a, you know, are, are they bought into the idea of, of wrestling and this is wrestling and not violence. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, th- do you have, do you treat, do you view wrestling as a, a violent affair or do you view it as a competitive sport? Yeah. I think and, that's where, and, you know, people have, choose their sides. And I think the believability is, is a biggest factor, too. I think much mm-hmm. like uh, the questions you have when somebody wrestling somebody like a Zach Gowan is like, I have to make it believable that that this is a competitive match. You know, that this guy with one leg can do these boos and it beat me, you know, potentially. I, mm-hmm. I think it's the same thing with the women. I, I, I think it is... Uh, uh, I, uh, Ricky Shane Page uh, is in this one. He makes a good comment. He's like, I'm just going to wrestle her like a smaller guy. Yeah. You know, you don't have to make it believable to a certain point. Um, I think it is crazy to see, like, a little angel dust is one one girl that's in here I've seen. She is a mm-hmm. tiny girl. She's very tiny, small. tiny, tiny, tiny girl. Uh, we were kind of half, you know, joking at because she had a match with Serafini, and Serafini is not a large girl either. But mm-hmm. uh, Angel there Dust, is a but there Angel is. Dust, and here's a picture. If you're on video here, there's there she is in the ring. She's so tiny that um, that that Sarah was doing power moves with her, you know, mm-hmm. because just because she could, because she was that much tinier. Um, and, and I, I think. think it, it, Going back to it, I think because it made sense. Like it made yeah. sense for yeah. you know, treating treating it like a weight class as opposed to a a, a you know male or female thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, especially, I think that's why it thrives a bit more on the independents because independent res- male wrestlers tend to be a bit smaller. Uh, and I think uh, that's with- why it thrives. I uh, to be honest, because yeah. the matches I've seen, the stuff we saw for my first experience of cor- of it, of course, was at that that National Pro Wrestling Day. Uh, when they had a few yeah. few spots, and there was one where uh, there's one girl. I think it was a tag match, but they just happened to have one girl in it, right? Uh, um, you're uh, thinking about Heidi Lovelace. I think it was a Heidi becoming, Lovelace one, right? It was becoming a big like I'm wrestling in a gender now. She won uh, the Heritage title in AAW, which is a right. male's title, and she's been wrestling men there. So. Now versus, I think, I think then having your Claudio Castagnoli versus Sarah Del Rey matches in Chikara, I think uh-huh. already you are sort of. Um, letting a level of disbelief because it's Shakara, right? So I think you have yeah. a little more room, especially. I mean, I mean, Claudio Cesaro now um, is is a b- bigger, buffer dude, and not that not that Sarah Del Rey is a, is a waif, but you know, um, I, but I there think is a size difference. There's I definitely think- a size difference, um, and I think we should mention. I, I I don't know. I can't remember if we've mentioned this in in the past, but Lucha Underground. Is doing, doing intergender, intergender as well, to, and and to the point where I think was it did Chavo hit uh, her with a chair the second the, week? Yeah, and it very much was a a you know that's a thing to do as a heel. Yeah, and, and I, I I I don't think that's a bad thing. I think you know yeah, it, it, as much as you, I don't want people to be a I, I this isn't the proper run, but uh, asexual or a like there there is no such thing as gender because there is such a thing as gender. But um, you'd watch uh, Sexy Star, uh, who's a female there at Lucha Underground Wrestling, Matt Cross, who's under a mask. And yeah. they're very evenly, you know, I, I don't consider Matt Cross to be, you know, that much significantly bigger than, than her. No, no, uh, he's, he's a buff guy, but he's not a tall guy by any means. No, not at all. Um, I think it, I, I, watching that documentary, uh, uh, Ricky Shane Page was one of the guys that really stuck out to me as, as someone who uh, – who, was very much like, I'm just going to treat it like a regular wrestling match, and I'm not going to do it like a comedy match just because she's a woman. Mm-hmm. Like, I, And I think that's another ma- thing that's very much a go-to. It's very much comedy sometimes if it's, you know, oh, we have to get this out of the way. And then uh, Brandon Stroud talked about this, and, I, and he got some flack for it, but I do agree with his point a lot, is that intergender wrestling matches, not all the time, but tend to tell the same story. The man does not think the woman can hang, so she has to prove herself, and then she eventually does prove herself, or doesn't, but she eventually does prove herself, and then the story resets again with a different male. And it, it kind of defeats the purpose of, mm-hmm. of having the woman prove herself. You know what I mean? Uh, because she has to constantly do it. Um, it it's very 
interesting. There's a lot of people that are doing it very well, I think. Um, Beyond Wrestling is a company that I think does intergender wrestling very well, uh, uh, particularly with one of their bigger stars, uh, Kimberly. Uh, she recently had a match with Drew Gulak that they had, which was an intergender wrestling match. And it was in a sense of, it was in a sense of prove yourself, but it was in a sense that um, Drew Gulak actually trained Kimberly. Uh, at the CZW Wrestling Academy. So it wasn't a matter of she had to prove herself because she was a woman. She had to prove herself because she was a tra she was the trainee of the guy that brought her up in wrestling. Um, and, I, and I think that's really successful. But when I heard uh, AIW's Girls Night, or excuse me, uh, Battle of the Sexes, was very much a successful event. Um, and I think it can be done right. I think it can be done very wrong. Um, uh, another great place to sort of uh, talk about this, Colt Cabana uh, had a recent art of wrestling with uh, Nicole Matthews, who's the current Shimmer uh, champion, uh, who also recently won a, the male heavyweight title for her home promotion, uh, ECCW in Canada. Uh, and they talked about how, you know, how it's different. He, he finds it very difficult because he, does, he, he kind of has faced intergender wrestling matches before and, and, He's been like, well, I don't really want to hit you because this is how the fans are going to react. And can we find a way to work around it, stuff like that? And, and women tend to get offended by that. Um, and, and Nicole Matthews sort of talked about how it's like it's not a, it's not a sort of a, a thing that she uses often, but it, it's something that made sense. I, I think in the end of the day, it's very much like at least let wrestling make sense. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think it's gonna. It's cool to see documentaries like this floating around and uh, bringing a lot of attention to the topic and showing something that's truly different that's happening out there. And it's cool to see something mm -hmm. like Lucha Underground uh, bring it to the forefront with television as well. So definitely, awesome. I, I think I think it will never reach the WWE level. No, no. I, I think they unless, have so many. And plus, they have so I, many people to answer haven't to. they kind of had that with their sables and their chinas in the past? And unless yeah. it's a situation like that, they're not going to touch it again unless we have another attitude type era for whatever reason that may be. So. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, it's, like you said, it's great to see someone like Lucha Underground, who is fairly mainstream, yeah. doing something like that. Yeah, so... Um, other than that, you know, there's a lot of indie wrestling going on. We were looking at a list earlier. Uh, there's indie wrestling in Alaska, dude. There is a lot. That's awesome. There's a lot going That is on. completely uh, awesome. I mean, you know there's stuff in Hawaii, too. Uh, but nothing really <laughs> stuck out that we're following, at least. So I definitely... Go look up some indie wrestling. See if there's anything in your town. Um, I wish this list was publicized somewhere. I, I don't want to copy and paste this since it's not ours. Uh, but there, we get this email list from from Nate Stein, who also I think I think he does PR for, for like CZW and stuff too. Um, but it's just a listing of every wrestling promotion um, doing a show in the in like the coming weeks, uh, and, and it is it is tremendous. I, how many things? How much stuff do you think is on there? Like it's God, there's, there's a good, especially like the Saturday Sundays like there's a lot of stuff. There is on. a ton uh, of stuff. Uh, there have to be like just this weekend. There has to be at least fifty shows. Actually, far more than fifty shows. Probably. <laughs> Holy crap! Um, this list list is incredible. And we get I know we get it every like probably about once a month here um, on the on the Mayhem Show account. Um, so <laughs> I mean, I just like going through there and just poking through that. Uh, but again, yeah, I really wish it was kind of public for everybody to kind of check out. We should just like start just randomly tweeting these. <laughs> if you're if you're bored this weekend amazing. and you're in the Humboldt, Tennessee area, check out newbreedpro.com having a show <laughs> November 22nd, for instance. Let's just random call outs. How about um, if you are in the Trinity, Florida area on Saturday, November 22nd, check out ACW. They have a Facebook page, ACW Pasco. At the mm. Athletic Performance Center. There you go. I love it. Who knows? Who knows? Hollywood yeah, Championship I mean, Wrestling. I think, I think JoJo, you know, talked talk about in his interview. Don't get, you know, if it's not like a big name independent wrestling company, so go to it because you never know what you'll find. Yeah, you do never know. I mean, we, we kind of like poked at the, uh, this generation's of pro wrestling that happened here in town. They had the unfortunate uh, uh, ness to be roped into. Um, but it was an experience, you know. And I got to see midget wrestling and, and a fake Doink the Clown and uh, some of my friends wrestle. You know, it was still an experience. Even, even if there was only 30 people, literally 30 people in the crowd, you can count them on the tape. Um, I mean, that's that's fine. It was an experience. I got I, It was better than sitting at home. 
It, it was still better, probably better than sitting at home, you know. Mm. But um, but no, yeah, definitely check out anything like that. Hey, CZW actually has something tomorrow night. It's tomorrow night. Oh, do they? CZWWrestling.com, of course. Awesome. Uh, definitely go check them out. Uh, uh, definitely a group that's doing a lot of really cool stuff mm-hmm. uh, beyond the even death match stuff. So. Certainly. Certainly. Black Diamond Pro Wrestling Friday, Brilliant Ohio, mm-hmm. BlackDiamondWrestling.com. They've been, they're putting their shows on YouTube, I know. So there's another one to check out. So with that, uh, that's all I got for this week, if that's all you got. That is all I got. Sorry. Uh, hey, great interview with JoJo Bravo. Really entertaining. Um, I hope I hope he talks comic books with a friend here coming up. So, I, I really hope so, too. <laughs> it would be fantastic. So on that note, uh, well, Eamon, of course, uh, InspirePro.com. Uh, InspiredProWrestling.com. Uh, InspiredProWrestling.com. Check out what's coming up there uh, for us up here at SorgatronMedia.com, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, and of course, Pro uh, PittsburghWrestling.com for all the DVDs and digital downloads are out. We have uh, 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 Combat and Clearfield 7 is up, uh, including the single match downloads for 99 cents a piece for that show. Uh, we also have RWA Salute to the Troops. Two, including Hurricane Helms and a great Shane Andrews versus Sanjay Dutt uh, cruiserweight match, uh, also up for DVD pre-order as well as digital download right now. And get on those. A lot of people jumping on the digi- digital downloads last week. Thank you, everybody that's been participating in that, and I hope people have really been enjoying it. Somebody, somebody out there is really loving the RWA stuff. Uh, I, I've had a couple people come through, and they'll get a couple shows, and then they'll get the rest of the shows. Like it seems like, like I can't believe how many people, how much people are digging into those 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 libraries sometimes. So it's really cool to see that and people people kind of sampling some of that stuff and hopefully they become new fans. You know, if they bought that much of that stuff, you know, it's great to see. So uh, hey, thanks again. Check out basicsickness.com. Uh, he he does the intro outro music for this and the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check us out at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Um, subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show and all the rest of the Wrestling Mayhem Show shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, iHeartRadio, wherever you can find us. You can also drop us a line to the email address of goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. If you have anything about indie wrestling you want to talk to us about, uh, drop us a line on any of those. We're also on Twitter at Mayhem Show, as well as I'm at Sorgatron, and he's at Amen to please. And uh, you can also check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show on Google Plus, Facebook, and the Great Facebook Group. And join us here every Tuesday about 11 p.m. at live.sorgatronmedia.com. So until next time, for Amen, this is Sorg. Support some indie wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, 